Unbelievable. All right, what do you think? And uh, we're going to hear tonight from President Biden in the State of the Union address. And also, I got to ask you about this: no mask mandates, right? If you're vaccinated, no social distancing. Uh, I think that news came out a few days ago. What do you think that's going to look like? What do you expect? Uh, I think he'll have a lot more of the same rhetoric that he's had. I think he'll say a lot of words and say very little in those words, a lot of rhetoric, <laughs> a lot of talking. He won't address the main things. He won't address our border security issues. He won't address our energy issues. He will not address inflation. He will not address in a proper way how he's going to make sanctions that uh, bring Russia and Putin to their knees that either get rid of Putin or make them withdraw from Ukraine. I think it'll be a lot of hollow words that sound good and make him sound tough. But at the end of the day, when you dig into substance, it won't be anything of substance, I don't think. I, I hope it I, is. You know, I really hope he stands strong and is a great leader, but I just don't see that happening, Gerard. You know, with his poll numbers floundering to uh, unprecedented levels for a president at this point, I believe, in his presidency, you would think that maybe he'd do something to try to prop those up, but it sounds to me like, and I agree with you, sir, I think that's what we're going to hear, I don't see that moving the needle. I, I don't either. I think uh, right now they are a party in disarray because they have no leadership at the top, just like this nation is floundering a little bit because we have no leadership at the top. And I, I don't think they understand the problem set, so they can't have solutions if they don't even understand the problem set. What do you think about your colleague there in the House, Rashida Tlaib, delivering a response, uh, a member of their own party? I, I read a report earlier, Congressman, that described it as keying your own car, <laughs> essentially. I thought that was a good analogy. I, I think so, too. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I listen to very little she says. Uh, she's another <laughs> one of those people who has a lot of hot air, but there's rarely any substance to anything that she says. You know, I mean, this goes back to all the defund the police and all the wokeness and, and, and all these things. We're focusing on the wrong things in this administration. Let's focus on the border. Let's focus on what we look like to our allies and defending the things that are important. Let's focus on being an energy exporter, not an energy importer. Let's focus on getting this inflation down. Let's focus on our supply chain issues. But we don't hear any of that. All we hear about is wokeness and everybody's a racist and all these things that, uh, that have no substance in making America better. I looked and shared this on the air yesterday at uh, uh, Congressman Jayapal's Twitter. And, and over the weekend, I saw nothing about the situation in Ukraine. It was, it was all about uh, demanding and insisting uh, this abortion-on-demand stuff get passed. And there's some anti-lynching bill or something she referenced. I wasn't even familiar with that. Oh, oh, Gerard, yeah, there was an anti-lynching, which I voted for because it, it makes sense. But the, it, you can't kill somebody twice, and you can't give someone more <laughs> than a life sentence. But the one that got me was the hair bill where hairstyles, uh, it, allowing everyone to wear whatever hairstyle they're not, not and not being uh, discriminatory about <laughs> hairstyles. So I, I didn't know if baldness was included in that or not, but I wanted to make sure that it was, but I voted against that bill. That's unbelievable. Congressman, always a pleasure having you on the program, sir, and I'm, I'm sure we'll be talking to you soon. We look forward to, I guess, to the speech tonight. We'll be analyzing it tomorrow. Take care, my friend.